email to Michael and he will give you the contact information and you guys can have whatever conversations uh, off, off the uh, screen. Yeah. Does that work for you? Yeah. Sure. Fine. That's great. Okay. Uh, Al. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. Go so ahead. Let me it's just kick it off. So I'm glad it open up. Yeah, let me just thank you for joining. This is uh, our fourth get together. We're sponsored by the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. And um, we, we have, I think there's about 70 people that have uh, signed up um, yeah. to, to be on our mailing list and interested in this, which is, which is a lot more than, uh, um, you know, we're really happy about that. Uh, we, we've got a number of other networks like this that are forming. And if you have any interest, you can let me know. We have Jewish cooking and we're, we're getting together this week. I think they're doing it and they, they're gonna do Jewish cooking Chinese. And there's another network about Jewish baseball. And there's another network that's just forming, which is going to be about Jewish genealogy. You know, both, both how to learn how to do it and for those that are more advanced. So if you're interested in any of these networks that are forming, you just let me know and I'll get you uh, hooked up to uh, the appropriate people. Uh, but Thursday night, I think they're going to do this uh, Jewish, um, Jewish Chinese cooking, which I thought is an interesting topic. Excuse me, Mike. Uh, are all these affinity groups on the FJMC website? I asked people to mute their phones because I've got one piece. I'm getting some feedback from somebody that's um, they've got two sources of. Uh, yeah, Mike. I was asking if all these affinity groups are also on the FJMC website. Yes, they will all be on the FJMC website um, and uh, published, you know, publicized like this. Oh, Wally's tuned in as well. Okay, great, thank you. This, this one is also, and, and we've been getting together uh, on alternate weeks, and as long as uh, you guys are interested, we'll continue to do that. So, so I, I want to hand this over to Al Davis and Joe Rothstein, who are the leaders of this group. And um, I'm going to sit here. I guess we change our profile. I have to accept people in, so I have to be watching when people are trying to get in. So I'm going to do that. And um, Al, Joe, take over. Okay, so I'm going to apologize to any newbies who may be on here yet, whose name we might not have had on the list yet. I did send out an uh, email a little bit earlier this evening. Uh, with a glossary of terms. We're going to listen to a little video here, which is uh, actually, I, I say narrated, but it's really sung in the background by Mickey Katz and one other guy. And it's very cute. It's all about our favorite habit as Jews, which is Essen and Fress and eating and really eating. And uh, there's a lot of good Yiddish in it. I, I think it's extremely uh, humorous. It's about five minutes. So let me just share the screen here. And I will see if I can get it going so that we can listen and hear. Hello. Yeah. I, uh... I was telling them, but then people agreed. Michelle, that people are already like that. What is that? Even though it's easy to play that all the time. You're showing the video. Are you going to need Sally? Is there sound with this? I'm speaking with stuff when you speak. Yes, you can. So it's not. So they're just saying food in a dilly at the moment. Doesn't sound like anything real surprising. Mickey Katz is going to be a sport. He's a comedian. You know. You're talking in the background, you're not going to hear anything, and neither will anyone else. With all the children in the building? Yeah. I knew that I'd be back five days a week, but I don't need all the children in the building at one time. These schools are so, I think you guys days. have to share the sound also. Good idea. Get it, Mike. Go on strike. Yeah, 
Al, is there sound? Yeah, we're not hearing it. Alan, we're not hearing the sound. Yeah, you need to share the sound as well as the video. Yeah, we're not getting any sound. Al, can you hear us? Are you saying you're not getting the sound of this thing? No, we're not hearing no. any sound. You no. have to turn the sound on. No. Sound is on. Sound is on. You have to share the sound the same way you share the screen. You have to share the sound. And can you mute everybody, Al? I'm looking to see that. My chocolate strawberry. That's not a control that I believe I have. Oh, share computer sound. There we go. I should bring it back to the start, start. Yes, I'm going to take it back to the beginning. Okay, let's try it again. But everybody else, here we go. Did you walk some poop? You know what it is. It's a class song on Yiddish. Oh, I went to a delicatessen. The Federation of Men's Club. Instead of Gidile, I catch the Akile. Before me, I hack around everything. It's the best. I hold my niche. Delicatessen. It's ingenious, it's so delicious. Listen, you all have a tune. If you are flicking, there's nothing like seeking for the baby, the bobby, and you. Sie müssen Katschki, Rapacholatschki, your morgen will butcher, it's true. Ha Gläsele, Seltzer, will straighten you white, if not baking soda will do. He mische, mische, ne hu. Hulje, ket, rulje, nu. He give me no choice, she loves her kippers, for it's yet in a get your chair. Hey, Bob and Pitcha, I stick Kaleva, please have some Tegelach too. Do you take the rest for me, children? It's best for the baby, the Bob and you. Oh my god, what a view, what a view. Shalom, my little, I'm gonna say, Dahabit, Melo Israel. Gee, but it's great to be coming home straight, slapping my baby back home. We hold it and dance at the bar mitzvah ranch, slapping my baby back home. She got loaded down at matzah ball gulch, loaded with gribbon essen schmaltz. She ate 60 blintzes, now I'm dying by inches, slapping my baby back home. We stop for a while, she give me a smile, and yet when I think I'm all shit. Then I start to bed, and that's when I get. A frosh can pull him in and kiss kiss us yet. We start back to town, my blood pressure is down. I'm fiddling, but it's whining in home. 
for falling or use Cause she cooked by me the goose She left and my baby back home Is that pickle in the window? The one that sent up on the pail. Took me a few cost is that pickle in the window. I do hope that pickles for sale. My ass of two. A pickle is good with hot doggies. Or salami, what's hard like a brick. But never eat pickles with ice cream Cause ice cream and pickles don't mix <laughs> Don't let the schmaltz get in your eyes Don't let the locks get in your socks A cheese goes with lintes And eggs with salami There we have it. Okay, that was very nice. There's one thing we like to do as Jews, essen. <laughs> and there was plenty there. Some of you may have eaten in some of those delis. Okay. Um, Schimmels, the great Kanish bakery, still open in Manhattan, but uh, not what it once was. Anyway, Joe, take it away. Joe, he, Joe is muted. Hit your space. Unmute yourself. Hit the space, boy. Am Joe, I unmuted? There you go. There you go. Okay, so let's open up the evening for discussion. That was a, a very exciting video. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I haven't had dinner yet, so now I'm really hungry. Uh, so if uh, what we'd like to do is when you, if you want to say something, uh, raise your hand so you can be uh, recognized. And when we go to you, you've got about, let's say, one minute to first tell us where you're calling from. We have people from around the country. We'd like to know where you're calling from. And uh, maybe a little bit about how much uh, uh, Yiddish you may know or how you are uh, connected to Yiddish. But uh, since we have quite a few people who have uh, joined us, We'd like to keep things as uh, brief as possible, and we want to hear what you've got to say. If it's a story, if it's a joke, that would be great. Uh, personal stories, and if you can translate them from Yiddish to English or English to Yiddish, uh, that would be uh, a fun thing to do. Any suggestions? We're also open to hearing. So that was Yiddish, by the way. You put the hearing at the end of the sentence. Throw mother from the train a kiss. You're with me on that. So uh, at that point, if anyone would like to comment on the video or share something with us, it's up to you. By the way, I'm calling, or I'm in from Charleston, originally from Chicago, and prior to that, born in Germany. And of course, this is my beautiful wife. You ever, you know, these game shows and talk shows, has anyone ever said, I'd like to introduce you. This is not my beautiful wife. Uh, <laughs> this isn't my average wife, or this isn't even my wife. I mean, you have, or some woman saying, well, this is my husband. He's really an ass. But uh, anyway, <laughs> on that note, take it away. Anyone would like to join in the conversation? Let's hear from you. Thank you. Why don't you call, why don't you call on people? Because people are raising their hand, and you can see their. Names. I can't see who's raising their hand, Michael. So you do that. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start with Ruth Feinberg. 
Um, okay, if it's okay with you, because the email said if anybody had a story they wanted to share, and I have a little story. Um, I am from Highland Park, New Jersey, as is um, Al Davis, and um, we have somebody here from Highland Park, Illinois, so Highland Park is really well represented here. Um, so I was uh, in a Yiddish class um, that um, got uh, canceled when COVID started, and we had cute little stories. And if it's okay with you, I have a, a one-page story. Is it okay? I mean, if that's not... Absolutely. Ideal. Okay. Okay, so uh, as an introduction, uh, Ruffle's friend Esther has come to visit from New York, and Ruffle has invited Dovid and Chana to her flat for dinner so that they can all get to know each other. Esther wants to help Ruffle with the cooking, but Ruffle refuses the offer. Okay, um, so Esther says, Rachel, do hast gesagt, as du darfst nicht kein health in kich, aber bist du sicher? Hast du schon Tage als gegrakt? Which is, uh, uh, Rachel, uh, uh, Rachel, you said that you don't need any help in the kitchen, but are you, are you certain? Um, have you already prepared everything? And Rachel says, yeah, I have kimit ge enge. I have gestelti bulbus in oifin mit a sha turek uni hob ge kok de zuk. Ruffle says, um, yes, I've already finished. Um, I put the potatoes in the oven an hour ago and I already cooked the soup. So Esther says, Efsha kini schneiden grinsen or der machen a salad. Maybe I can chop some vegetables or make a salad. Ruffle says, Nein, Adan, ich hab schon gegrägt die Grinsen und gemacht dem Salat. Ich hab euch gekauft de Schokoladkuchen und a Fleschel Wein. Uh, no, thank you. I've already um, prepared vegetables and I made a salad and I bought a chocolate cake and I have a bottle of wine. Esther says, Ich hab nicht gewusst, as du bist as a balabuste. Ich hab Gemeint as du kennst bichlal nicht kochen. In New York hast du ständig gegessen in Restauranten. Um, I never knew you were such a balabusta. Uh, I thought that you didn't know how to cook anything. In New, in New York you always ate in restaurants. Rachel says, Was charetz du? Es ist nicht das euch schwer. Ich hab gelernt a poor kochbücher. Ich hab schon gekannt Kochen, wenn ich hab gewohnt in New York. Hast du Tage gemeint, als, als ich kenn nicht zu greaten a paschutte Bechere? What are you talking about? Um, it's not that hard. I learned how to cook from cookbooks. Uh, I learned while I was living in New York. Um, hast du Did, are you, do you mean to say that I don't know how to prepare a simple dinner? Esther says, Zay Moichel, ich hab nicht gewusst. I'm so sorry, that's not what I meant. Esther uh, Rachel says, Es macht nicht, nicht euch. Nu lomer a roins nehmen dos essen von oven. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's just take the food out of the oven. And Esther says, Dach sich, as die Bulbis zenen noch a bissel roy, bist du sicher, as sie zenen. Great. Uh, these potatoes seem a little raw. Are you are you sure that they're ready? And Rachel says, Oi vey, hab vergessen oinsen den dem oi 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 ven. Oh, oi vey, I forgot to turn on the oven. And that's that. Sorry, it wasn't that funny. Okay. This <laughs> kind of place? What? No meat. Huh? <laughs> no, nothing. The potatoes were raw. It, everything in the oven was raw. It looks like they're just having salad. Oh, the soup is cooked. But the meat and the potatoes are raw. A lot of good Jewish words there. A lot of good Jewish words. So I, see and, um, I, so I apologize for being a Galiziana. So uh, I'm sorry if you say things. And my American accent on top of that. So, okay. So I, I see mm -hmm. kibbutz, kibbutz, Kramer. Kramer. 
if you hit the space bar, if you hit the space bar to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. Kibbutz camera, you're muted. You have to unmute. I will unmute you. Try to. I think you have to unmute yourself. Hit, hit the space bar. You have to unmute. Okay, who else okay. would like to try? Somebody else had their hand up. If you also move your cursor to the top right of each box, there's three dots and a mute and unmute. You can just hit that and you unmute. See at the top right, put your cursor on it. Next Someone said it up for her, so she's finish. not going to be able to, I don't think. I'm not going to do that. So somebody else had their hand up. Louis, did you have your hand up? I did have my hand um, Louis Peerless. I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, yeah, I'm writing a book on civility and civil behavior and uh, finished up a 30 plus year business career. But before I did all of that, my goal, when I found out I couldn't become an airline pilot because my, uh, my vision wasn't uh, good enough. So I thought maybe you have a rabbi. Oh, thank you. So I went to a, a program in New York, the Jewish Theological Seminary and Columbia University have a joint program that they put on. And I felt like at, at JTS, I was being taught by the greatest minds of the 17th century, which they were. And um, also people like uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel. So it was a very interesting experience. Uh, from JTS, I then got a, got a degree, but then I went, um, I'll get this right. Then I went to New York and I got a job at Hyas. And I worked for them for about three years. My responsibility was bringing in Russian families that did not have relative stateside. So I would travel to Jewish family service agencies around. Um, and it was a very rewarding program. Um, would you speak Yiddish I, to them? Were you speaking Yiddish? Well, I, I, that's where I learned my Yiddish, really was from Hyas, not from my teachers. Because my teachers, I didn't care. Hyas, I did, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, my, my nickname was Lulichke. <laughs> <laughs> Very uh, nice. Yeah, and uh, yeah, still, uh, so I was, with the highest experience, I learned some. Coming back to Cincinnati at HUC, there were a couple of, of folks there that enjoyed speaking Yiddish, so I was one of those. And then, unfortunately, he died a few years ago, but I had a good friend who was a, uh, you know, fluent in Yiddish. And uh, unfortunately, he, uh, he left us. So I have, now have no one with whom to speak Yiddish. Well, but you do. You have everyone now I was going to say, and I say, until 8 o'clock on every other Monday. So thank you all for uh, refreshing my memory. And... Uh, taking me back to some enjoyable times. Right, right. All right, I think the Bush Kamer. Hi, I'm Bonnie Kamer. I'm in Chicago, Illinois. I uh, grew up in Milwaukee from, with parents who were immigrants. My bully refused to learn English. So therefore I learned Yiddish, which I unfortunately realized I'd forgotten a lot of, but we're in my heart and we'll learn more. But I um, 
It isn't a Yiddish joke. It isn't a joke, but I came to my mind the other day. I'm 90 years old. And the other day I was not feeling well. And I don't know how many of you were around in the Second World War. <coughs> but I remember when somebody would ask my Bobby, my mother, how do you feel? They'd say, Hitler should feel so good. <laughs> but I realized nobody around me would even understand that. <laughs> but Yiddish is wonderful. It's soft and it's oi. I'm a high. <laughs> Somebody's got something going on there. Well, he's got two sources here. I'd like everybody to mute if they could. And we got somebody that's a big feedback. If no. she's in the aliens. Huh? Here to us for the aliens, Kim to do. No, no. No? no? We've got two berries here that are online. Not special. It's whoever the two berries are, maybe getting feedback from one to the next. So David Kapowski oh, last God. week recommended that we do what we're doing about telling where we're from. He needs a turn. Go, David. My lawyer here. Yes. All right. So um, my parents are uh, uh, were survivors. Uh, they were from Kalushan, 50 miles east of Warsaw. And um, they were 11 years, my father was 11 years older than my mother. And um, my father went through the camps, essentially. He went, he did a, sort of did it all. He did the uh, Polish army, the Warsaw Ghetto, then Krasnik, and then Plashov. And then uh, he ended up in a sub-camp of Mudhausen, uh, Ebenze. I mean, he made it through. And... My mother, on the other hand, lived in disguise as a Catholic girl in Chenstohova. She and my aunt, Hannah, they were together. They had false papers, false identities, worked in a glass factory, lived in a convent, and they made it through. And um, they met my father and a couple of his friends from the camp hitched on to a mass unit that made its way um, west and ended up in Lanshut, Germany. Once it is in Bavaria near Munich and then my mother who was liberated before my father. My father was the last day of the war in May, May 4th. By the way he died on May 5th. And um, uh, my mother was liberated in January. She went back to Kalushin because her family had a flour mill. They were pretty well off and they were trying to see if they could salvage anything but the Russians had already taken it over. And they met up with another family who had survived the Berman family out of, anybody from Detroit? The Detroit area on this? Yeah. It was the Berman family. They later came to America and made leather seats for luxury cars, they did. Very interesting story from their, their side. But together they made their way, the Bermans and my mother and my aunt, there were three or four surviving siblings among the Bermans, and they made their way um, west, and they were in Schlachtensee where Anita's parents were for a while, but they heard about my father in Lanshood. Everybody was looking for a Lanceman, right? Or somebody who was alive. And they found each other in Lanshood, as did my father, two of my father's brothers that survived. There were seven children in his family. Three survived, my Uncle Fischel, my Uncle Yoina. And they found my father in Lanshood. And they had a community. A, we call it a Kalashina community. And then um, they were preparing to go to, waiting for Israel to be uh, founded in 1948. And my parents got a letter from Charleston from Ratza and Yossel Zucker, who happens to be Anita's late husband's uncle and aunt. Betty knows this whole story. Betty's, Betty, hello, Betty. Betty's father, yeah, darling. Betty's father and father-in-law, Max Hirsch and Isidore Lance and their wives, Sylvia Hirsch. And, you know, Rosie, I've forgotten Mrs. Lancer's first name. Was it Rosalie? What was your grandmother's first name? Vera. Vera, yeah. They were the best of friends of my parents. Yes. And uh, they know the whole story. And yes. um, anyway, so uh, my parents got a letter from the Zucker saying, we'll sponsor you to come over to Charleston. My mother said the only time she ever heard the word Charleston was the dance. And uh, <laughs> they made a decision to, my father said, let's take a look at America. He always liked to kick the tires and touch the cloth. They came to America and Char to Charleston where they had a fair number of 
Charleston had a very unique situation where a lot of people from there, uh, collusion, they had a lot of Lonsmen here who had come over before the <laughs> war. And so they had a little community here. But I would say uh, about a third of the Jewish community, at least, um, Rousey's husband, Donald, his family. David. Was yeah. Listen, you know, I was brought up on Radcliffe Street with all the Kalashinas. Yeah. And, and this was the song we sang. Come and meet those dancing feet. On the avenue, I'm taking you to Kalashina Street. <laughs> they also accused us of being horse thieves. My mother used to, they, they, there were stories about us. They accused us of being horse thieves. And my mother said, that's just America. Don't listen to it. <laughs> but anyway, there were stories. They, anyway, so um, the long story short, my father and mother had a furniture store, raised four children, produced six grandchildren, and Taka, America is a great country. So... Um, in terms of a story of Yiddish, I will say this. Here's how I grew up. I say my Yiddish is transactional. In other words, my parents spoke Yiddish to each other conversationally. I never witnessed one conversation between my parents in English. Not a one. Blois Yiddish, they spoke to each other. So you had to hear what they were saying. And actually, they switched to Polish when they didn't want us to understand. But to us, it was tra I call it transactional. Effenzatia, Machzatia, Viloista, Vigesta, Rednish Seafill, you know, all of that was uh, um, a story, that was how I kind of worked with the kids. So I do have a happen to story. Did I, know, did I tell you a story about the high school pageant, the beauty pageant in my high school? I ever tell you about this story? Did uh, you win? No, I didn't, but I was the master of ceremonies. This is so funny. And then you get a kick out of this. So uh, my. Uh, they asked me to be the master of ceremonies for the beauty pageant. So I'm doing my, I bought a, I rented a tuxedo and I mean a dinner jacket. I really did it upright. And what they had was the stage was at, the whole place was dark except a spotlight on whoever was relevant at the time. So all I had was a spotlight on me and darkness in front of me. I couldn't see who was where and what. But um, so I'm doing the program as it was planned. And then I get a from the back. And they said, you need to kill 15 minutes. We have two girls that have the same dress. And we've got to correct that problem. Oh, no. That's bad. I didn't know it was a problem. But that's what they told me to do. So I start, ugh, what am I going to say? And I start with Narishkeit and try to make announcements for the school. And it was in the spring. And my father's store was called Henry's Furniture Company. And I said, oh, by the way, Henry's Furniture Company, this is, we're the only Jews in the place. So Henry's Furniture Company is having a Passover discount sale. <laughs> I had to come up with stuff. And I started saying all that. So my father, at that time, the Main Street, King Street, closed at 9 o'clock on a Saturday night. Everybody stayed over. Mr. Hirsch, her father, would come to our store, and they would listen to Chazonis on the, on the records, and we would meet and talk to you, Mr. Hirsch. <laughs> And then we would take your daddy home, Betty. Yeah. And then we would go home after we closed the store. Remember that? Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but my father never made a baseball game, never made anything. He was in the store, in the store, in the store. Somehow or another, he had decided to come to this thing that night. My mother talked to him about coming to this thing. That night. <laughs> and I didn't know that. <laughs> and he's yelling this booba mindsets and this Irish guy and, da, 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 and he is so embarrassed oh, and all of a sudden in the complete darkness to my right I hear Psst. and I, wait a minute another knockable and then I hear <laughs> Rednish <she fell." laughs> of course we're, I'm the only people who knew what was going on I got the message <laughs> he said the whole audience, 300 people, two people, three people knew Yiddish, my father, my mother, and me. And he used it. He said, that makes it so that's my story. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. So, so David, just, just a quick one for you is, uh, yeah. Sh Shirley's uh, out doing an errand right now, but I, I believe that Shirley's father was liberated from the same sub camp at Mauthausen as your dad. Yeah. Yeah. My father was in Mauthausen too. And Ebenzee. Mm -hmm. Among the, many, among, among the many camps, and we have a copy, oh, an identity I card. So clearly. You have it I have it. What's your last name? Uh, my, my name is uh, Hannah Sar. My father was Leon Feigenbaum. But uh, we have um, the Jewish Family Service. He gave me a copy 
that after the Russians opens up their archives, we have a, actually his identity card for Mauthausen. With yeah, his name. Have we have two of them. One of them listed um, uh, his uh, profession and one just like his name and birth, birth date. And yeah, I have copies of those. Uh, my yeah, father was in a bunch yeah, of... Uh, yeah, what was he in Abedzei at the end? The could, last one was... You know what? It could be that he was. I, I, you know, I, don't, I should remember, but oh, okay. it was in Majdanek. It was in a bunch of them. But yeah. uh, Abedzei definitely and Matt, Matt has the name. I, I, as I said, yeah. I have the... Um, the copy of, of, but anyway, I'm from Cleveland, Shirley's uh, childhood. All right, I'll communicate with you sidebar. They say we call lawyers, we call it sidebar. I'll find it. We'll, I just yeah. want to say, <laughs> hi, you. Reggie. And I will with Shirley too, uh, Mike. I didn't yeah. know that. Was, yeah, Shirley and I, we know each other from age 12 when I came to America. But how about, you want to hear a little song my mother taught me? Sure. In Yiddish. Yeah. So, I thought I remembered the words, but then I looked it up online. Somehow I found it. It's a miracle, but I, 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 so I, I did a little help here. Okay, so it's a little story. <laughs> okay. Gay, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I don't sing it. Gay, Khmir, Spazir, and Tra, la, 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 la. Gay, Khmir, Spazir, and Tra, la, 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 la. Bagag, and Tmir, a bocher, aha, aha. בגג נמיר הבוחר, אהה, אהה, ארזוק דרבת מרנה מנטרה, לה 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 לה, ארזוק דרבת מרנה מנטרה, לה 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 לה, ארלג תרסוק אוף זומר, אהה, אהה, ארלג תרסוק אוף זומר, אהה, אהה, דר זומר יזגקו מנטרה, לה 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 לה. דר זומר יזגקו מטרה לה 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 ארות מכניס גנו מנה אהה אהה ארות מכניס גנו מנה אהה אהה איצבי לרמיר שוינה מנטרה לה 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 איצבי לרמיר שוינה מנטרה לה 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 איצבי לכם נתקן אהה אהה איצבי לכם נתקן אהה אהה I'm going to sing a song. Where's David? David? Yeah. So we have singing the herring with potato song, Fase? All right, sure. You think so? How many people are hearing a potato song? I was singing, so I'm singing a bit of All right? Go, go. Go? Go? Functioning. Okay, good. All right. We had nothing but food on it, so Lord was singing a bistle about Essen, right? Essen make the Avustia Ville, Azol Achmet, Adresen. Gulash Estim Ungarian, Kiritiana Fis Enzisen. Romanian Essen, Mama Liga, Goyem Essen, Rukas. Deutschen Essen, Zorakrat, Bus Essen, De Lutwaken. Herring mit Potatoes, Herring mit Potatoes. A Kapura Steak mit Fleiz, Onions, Kotschki, Ostkiske. The best of Michael, for them Michael, is Herring mit Potatoes. Ma Steiner Gate. Kins and Hoven, the coilers gate some ceiling. And Dr. Hot is gesucht, a zivet hoven a twilling. As another doctor, hot drei kinder geschworen. And when sie gelegen geworden, treffut sie aus geboren. Herring mit Potatoes, Herring mit Potatoes, A Kapura Steak mit Fleisch, Onions, Kutschke, Oitschke, Der beste Michael, Vor dem Beichel, Is Herring mit Potatoes. Sehr schön, sehr schön, Herr Riedl. I tried it out on David first, and he liked it. Uh, Barry, you're going to need to mute yourself, Barry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh. Hold on. Wait a minute. Barry, you're going to try to places, and that's where we're getting the feedback. You've got two, you're on two units. That's better? That's better. Yeah.
Says given C field to to Essen. Uh, now it's been C field to Eden. That's that's all I wanted to say. Catch the session. Oh wait a minute! Stop. I'm sorry, I almost forgot. The Chaba Gris for Anita Zucher from Manchester. Got Barry on there. You're still muted, Anita. Go ahead. Yeah, I um I tried to send you a text. I hope you shook the text. Okay, off the telephone. Weiß nicht, was has has geschehen mit das. I hope you shook the text. Yeah, I hope. I got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, no, as I zuckman text off Yiddish. I'll try again next time. As <laughs> as schreiben. So there are some there are some new people on that ha hadn't been on the, but the first time, and love love to have them introduce themselves. Who's here on the first time? The first time. Who? Julia, Mike, Mike, where's Shirley? Pardon? You can't do that. Where's Shirley? You can't. I think oh. she's running an errand. Oh. Where is now? She's uh, outside. She bought flowers today. Cool now, Mike, where's my shitter? She's <laughs> outside. It's cool off. He's doing really well, by the way. What happened? She bought flowers today and she had cooled off. She waited all day to be able to plant them. Mm. Yeah, that's right. good. I'm we're, we're on Julian's time, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you didn't hear me? Okay. So, oh, yeah. Julian, introduce yourself. Uh, ich heiße uh, Julian Martinson. Ich bleibe in Highland Park, Illinois. Ich habe gekommen. Uh, uh, acht Jahre zurück, zurück von Kapstadt. Uh, ich bin um, Litwak. Oh mein, boy! Mein <laughs> große Mutter kommt von Krakenova in uh, Lithuania und Familie in Schavo. Uh, und oh, ich, uh, ich habe uh, mein, oh, mein uh, Jiddisch gelernt von mein Bobo und uh, Zayda. Julian. Hello. Did you hear the, the, the song I sang about the Lutwaken? The Essen, the Lutwaken, the herring with potatoes? The S herring with potatoes? Mir, mir glatt Essen as uh, uh, soup. The Lutwaken is mir, mir, uh, mir, mir uh, Geschmack. Soup is... Um, we we'll, we'll eat a lot of soup, the uh, Litva. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Soup is a staple. Oh, I thought they, I thought they ate herring and, herring and potatoes. Potatoes. My mother was Litva, potatoes. My father said vos, my mother said vos. So. My, my, my father. Reggie, Reggie, unmute yourself. My father was born in Ireland. Ireland? In, in Ireland. 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 They didn't feel a potato, uh, potatoes gegessen in Ireland. By no. Kartoffel. Kartoffels. Kartoffel. I just realized the Litvak. I don't. I just, I just realized I'm a Litvak because I understood Ju Julian's Yiddish. Yeah. People <laughs> say to me, let's see a Litvak. And I just realized I'm a Litvak because I understood his Yiddish. <laughs> My, my name is Reggie Gigi. I'm formerly from Cincinnati, live in Charleston, South Carolina. My parents were both Holocaust survivors. My mother was from Czechoslovakia, but the family was originally from Auschwitz and Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. And my father was from Poland. And I came here when I was 11 months old. And I was very mm -hmm. fortunate because my father from a family of 10 children, seven survived, which was almost unheard of. Mm -hmm. And my mother's three brothers were Zionist, and they went to Israel in 36. And out of six uh, siblings, one passed away. So I was very fortunate to have family. 
And uh, Lou, Highest brought us to the United States. I think Anita, they brought you too, right? And um, I remember growing up and I couldn't speak English. And I don't know if I told you guys this, but I would run in and say, Mama, Mama, wie suchst du das in English? And she would go, ich weiß nicht. You know, we'd go out and learn English in the street. And, uh, and my father, I used to trade jokes with my mother all the time. She would tell me Yiddish jokes. But for the life of me, I can't remember one. And I would tell her English jokes. So we would go back and forth in telling jokes and I would hear them in Yiddish and in English. And like you guys, I, uh, David, I just realized after you said it, that my parents only conversed in Yiddish. They never conversed between yeah. themselves in English. Oh, and it's funny how you don't realize that until somebody else brings it up. But I have a funny story that I, going to translate from, I wasn't sure if it was German or Yiddish, and Lou and Mike you knew my parents, and my father was a character, and they were touring, <laughs> uh, they were in France, and they were at Versailles, and my father standing in front of a statue of Louis XIV, and there's some people standing around who happen to speak German, so I grew up with German in my home and Yiddish combination, and my father, the people in the crowd are saying, Nu, wer bist du? Who are you? They're talking to the statue. What statue? What king are you? And my father says, Oh, ich bin Pinky Versizer from Cincinnati, Ohio. And he's answering the people because he thought they were talking to him. <laughs> so, like, you know, my aunt and my mother just like almost fell over laughing. And these people looked at him like, What? Are you Meshika or something? You know? And, but he was a character, and his English never improved with the years. <laughs> Who was it, a, a hot dog was a hard dog, a strawberry was a strawberry, and uh, it was amazing how they had a business and they ran a business, a successful business, with three survivors, and uh, they didn't speak English very well, but people understood them. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> We said yeah. other people. Mike Laser, go ahead. I didn't talk. It's enough. It's then uh, Michael and Jeanette Laser, the point in uh, New Canaan, Connecticut. It is Sivat from Highland Park, New Jersey. It's like the Zat from New York. The boy and born in Belgia, and my vab, my shine of vab, born in Canada. My mom, mom and tata, the boys and by the Polish. I was in Lage and by the Mishpucha, I was in Lage and Treblinka. No one sister, my mom's sister, I was in Lage and one tante from the whole Mishpucha. I was in Lage and I was in Lage and Dachau. So I was in Lage and Dachau. And my life was in Lage and Dachau. In Dachau, in Belgia, and what we went to school for ten years, and we came to America. Says my father's mishpucha is from Austria, Austria, and Czechoslovakia. This is all by its ever. All this is good yet. Morgen ich gehe spielen Golf. Zwei Kavayon. And my bab would leave to spiel a duplicate bridge. So there's a guy said duplicate bridge spieler. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Zeh get gesucht. Yes. 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 1945. Yeah. 1942. Oh, that's it. Friere, Friere. No, that was in, they liquidated the whole, um, the whole area. Geneva ships, Wallen, and they took them all to Treblinka. My, husband, my father only had one single cousin left from the whole family. I was lucky. 
No Habmer ice uh, under a Misa or a Lidula? This kind of Mises? Eileen. I'm Eileen. I'm Al's youngest sister. Uh -huh. I'm from Bayside. <laughs> um, it's a story of my husband who's deceased. Um, he received a letter about 10 years ago from a genealogist in Israel, and she was seeking my husband and his family. And first we thought it was a hoax. We thought it was a scam. And I checked it out and it was true. My husband had a cousin who survived the Holocaust and he didn't know about it. Her name is Chava and she was nine years old when she and her two youngest siblings and her parents were brought into uh, the Warsaw Ghetto. They took her father right away to a labor camp and the mother and the three children remained in the Warsaw Ghetto. When Chava was about 10 years old, she saw her stomach was very distended from hunger. And at that age, she knew if she stayed there, she was going to perish and that she had to escape this camp. So she told her mother and her mother said, if you go take your sister and brother with you. And she said, mama, I'm only 10 years old. I could hardly take care of myself, let alone take care of my siblings. So the mother went ahead and sold a pillow and gave her some money. And Chava walked out with the day laborers and the soldiers took her and returned her to the camp. At that point, I would have said good night. But she turned around and again walked out with the day laborers. And this time they let her go. And she was smart enough to know that she couldn't go back to her hometown because they would all realize that she was Jewish. So she passed herself off as a German child who had lost her parents. She spoke uh, full German and she would go to different farms and do menial jobs and live in the stables with the animals. She would eat what the animals were eating. In the winter, she hardly had any warm clothing. She would lay there crying and, and longing to see her parents. And she survived, she survived. Um, she met Betzalo and they were sent to Cyprus. And from Cyprus, they went to Israel where they got married and they had a family. And uh, we got to meet her. Now this woman who went through hell and back should hate the world. And instead, when I met her, she was hugging trees. She was the most loving, kind person I've ever met. She doesn't speak English. I don't speak Hebrew. I don't speak German or Polish. So we were conversing in Yiddish and my Yiddish is from Hunger. And plus her Yiddish is a German Yiddish, where instead of saying uh, the, the Vab, she would say the Frau. So it was very hard to converse, but somehow we did it. But it was such an amazing story. And I got to see the war through her eyes. And we found going through family pictures, we found a picture of her and her two siblings. And she hadn't seen her siblings since she was 10 years old. The emotion that came to this woman's face, I'll never forget it, I'll never forget. My husband was in World War II, he was stationed in England, he was over in Normandy. And he said after the war, if he knew that Chava was still alive, he would have taken her back to the United States, he had no idea. And to the day he died, it just, it just laid on his heart that he couldn't take her and, and, and bring her here for a better life. But with Betzel, she made a good life in Israel. She lives in a little Moshev right outside of Tel Aviv. And it, it was a gift that, that this genealogist brought to my husband and myself. Wow. Wonderful. So Shana Misa, Shana Misa. Yes, don't you. Yes, don't you. Thanks. Now, can we bring this session to a close with a song? Somebody have a song for us tonight? Tumbo Lamaika. Hi, Fan Kripacha. 
Up in you know all the words? We're at the fire. We're at the fire. Wachsen, wachsen und regen. Liebe Kinder, ich bin in der Schwere. Oh, Hans, in den Wehnen. Very good. Very good. How can I get on the mailing list? Can I get on the mailing I'd list? I play accordion. I could play accordion. And did you sing. register for tonight? <laughs> I, I did try and register a few nights ago. I, You'll be on the mailing list then. If you register, you get on the mailing list. Uh, okay. And you know what? Tomorrow I'll look at the mailing list to make sure that you're, you're on. So I, I have one, one, one quick message before we break. I got a message from um, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Camel. From he, he couldn't join tonight, but he was bringing his 95-year-old father who wants to speak Yiddish with Betty. So, Betty, send me your phone number. He wants to talk. Okay, I want to do more than speak Yiddish. <laughs> He's too old for me. Yeah. 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 All right. It was fun tonight, all. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have friends that you think yeah. should join, send we them. still have time. Uh, Mike, you still have time? Yeah, for a minute. Yeah, sure. For a minute. Well, one of these days I'm going to read to you all about Dry Indiana. Did you all ever hear about the Dry Indiana? Yeah, we heard that. Yeah. One. You did? Good. Yeah. I love I it. it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, good. Get the knock. Get the knock, Bella. Get the knock. I think it's Zayn Gazon. Zayn Gazon. Yeah, Zayn Gazon. I read. I agree, Sam Shirley. Right. Nice. Good night. 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 Good
Yeah, I'll show you the reflector next time. Bye, Hannah. Bye, guys. Bye, Reggie. Bye.